Hi friends, welcome back or to the channel. Uh, it's Friday, so got plenty of time to play because we're coming up on the weekend here. We're working on this thing this weekend. Here we have the big dog. Big dog. It's the 22, as you could see on the valve cover. And uh, I don't know how much you guys know about 22Rs, but those things only make about 85 horse when they're brand new. So when you're running big tires and, and stuff like that, you need to find all the power you can find. It runs like a 22R with low miles, but you know, in the never ending quest to find a few more horsepower and just wring its neck a little bit. It's already got a little bit of stuff done to it, but it's not enough. I mean, this thing's already got lower gears and all that fancy stuff, but it's got big tires on it. Big. Big for the body style. Big for what it is, I guess. Without cutting the fenders and all that shit, 35s are about the biggest you can go on these trucks. So they're big tires for the truck. And when I initially built the thing, I built it to run on 33 inch tires which I thought was plenty at the time. Then I stepped up to 35s, and now it's kind of a pig. Already has the big Weber upgrade, if you guys remember right. I actually made a video rebuilding this carburetor because it was leaking fuel, and it's a success because it's no leaking no more. It's all dry and, and pretty and looks new. So, all that extra fuel coming in so I've got the Mac Daddy Weber over there, but on this side, I have the factory manifold, which they do okay for a 22R, but I'm trying to squeeze a little bit more out of this thing, so I bought a header for this. And also, we're gonna be ditching this thing. Came with the new manifold gasket and the studs for the flange. This is a, I believe it's a Flotec header. Uh, obviously it's a short tube, but this is from Holly for the 22R. Let's see. That's your part number right there, if you can see it. And it was manufactured in April of this year, so it's new, you know. They sent this little guy too. It goes onto the bell here. But they forgot to send me my second flange for this piece. So I'm gonna have to cut one of these out of some plate steel real quick. That's not a big deal. Then this is the other part of the upgrade that we're doing here. And this is a, a Ford Taurus fan, and it's a two-speed fan. So you've got low and high. Low is like for engine cooling. High is for like when you're running your air conditioning or something, but that obviously does not have AC. So I'm probably just going to hook it up to the high side and just let it eat, you know? These were super, they still are, super common in the off-road industry because they're a big fan, but they package really well. They're pretty slim. And they're, you know, they're kind of small. This is like a 16-inch fan. I, I don't even think I paid for this out of the junkyard. I think they just gave it to me because I bought a bunch of other shit with it. But, you know, you could probably pick one of these up for 20 or 30 bucks at your local junkyard. And then I bought this. is a, a relay wiring kit for a fan. Because... I have a terrible time um, when I have electric fans on a toggle switch. I have a really bad problem with not remembering to turn the switch on because I'm paying attention to other shit until it overheats and, you know, starts puking antifreeze out. And then I'm like, oh, shit, turn the fan on. So, But I'm dumb and do not do research before I order parts most of the time. So 
we're gonna have to fabricate some stuff but we're I might be in luck here because when I built this thing here the motor and transmission and everything came out of an old Suburban, which had brand new ish exhaust underneath it. And I have some chunks of exhaust laying around. It's kind of late to get started on it today, but what I'm going to do is take some WD-40 and I'll spray the bolts down on the manifold and the collector and just let that soak overnight. We are back with the Toyota content. And put this guy in. It's the thermal switch for the electric fan. Because I've been doing a bunch of other shit today. We went and did some geocaching earlier and went into town and got lunch. Then come back and I did a few things on the Jeep that I've been needing to do for longer than I care to admit. But now it's Toyota time. So this is the factory temp sensor which as you can see I've had to fix, but I can't disconnect that because I like having the gauge in the dashboard. So I'll take this one right here out because that's on the, on the water neck. I'm going to pop that out because that is a water fitting. And we're just going to stick it right there. Let me get you set up here. There we go. I've already loosened it a little bit. Now I'm going to be using Teflon paste for my fitting because I don't like the tape. I prefer the paste Just looks more intentional and less lazy now Let's see what else we got in here. Shall we we got a random bag of It's not random. It's all the connectors and the fuse you're gonna need to run all this stuff The relay which is a 40 amp Relay, which is perfect for that Taurus fan I'm going to be using. And this. So that bag don't blow away because it's windy today. This is all you need right here. It's your relay plug, your fuse holder. And then it's a simple four wire hookup. What I'm going to do is because I have these two fuses right here for my headlights because I've switched this from a positive ground system to a negative ground switch system to run these LEDs. I think I'm going to take this new relay and put it right there. Maybe right there. Probably right there though. Just, you know, so it's easy to to cover, I guess. So now, we just got to get to work on, on doing all the, the stuff, you know, the things. Relay connector, inline fuse are the only two that are um, married. Then all this extra shit. Your red wire goes to the battery positive. Your brown wire, or coffee as they call it, goes to... The fan positive which means you have to ground your fan opposite of itself the black one goes to an ignition like a key on power source but make sure it's key on and then your white one or gray one goes to the sending unit that I just installed so all I need to do is ground the fan to the body somewhere and the sensor that I just installed is grounded through the block and the block is grounded to the body which grounded to the frame and yada 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 so only one of these wires goes to the actual battery this guy right here so that's easier and then the brown one I'm going to actually run because I have some wire loom in here behind the grill so I'm going to just tuck that brown wire in here, <clears throat> run it all through this loom, pop it back out that hole right there because the wiring on my fan should come over here somewhere. And then I'll just use one of these bolts in here for a ground for the fan. And as far as the ignition source, 
I've got all kinds of wiring <clears throat> underneath this hood that I can use for my keyed power source. So, don't judge me for my battery. I got all kinds of shit happening over here that you don't need to worry about, okay? Cut that off. Everybody loves extra stuff, right? We can use that wire for something else later on down the road. Break out that Milwaukee Fastback. Because a fancy wire stripper right there on the end of the blade. Not on the end of the blade, but you know what I mean. connection right there. Now, take our handy dandy little croissant wrench. That's where it gets a little spicy because every time I unhook this I shock the shit out of myself. End up getting all scared. <laughs> it's ridiculous man. Just like that. Relays in, fuses in. This part, I want to actually pull this tight and zip tight to my factory wiring down here. Let's see what else. Fuel lines out of the way. Um, I got my wire ran up through here. You can kind of see it right there. And then just dead end it here. Now, let's, uh, let's do some measuring, shall we? radiator width from the bolt hole that held the factory shroud on. I'm looking at 21 and 7 eighths. And then top to bottom, I got about 15. Okay, we're gonna get started on at least disassembling this and getting the header put on. I don't think I'll be able to get everything put together today because I just don't have enough time to build exhaust today. But we can get a pretty good start on it. Check it out. Old manifolds out. All crusty, musty, this evap crap. Let's see if we can get this one to pop in there, shall we? You guys can tell I've already got the new gasket slid down in here. just plop right up in there I probably should um, have gotten new studs for it but these ones are still in great shape so I'm not worried about it headers on the 22 are sounds so disrespectful if I was in my 20s I would run it just like that but I like to have conversations in the cab now plus it's got a really nice muffler on it so done for the day all right guys we're back it's been uh, I don't know it's been a couple of days but now I finally have some time to to get back to work on this exhaust hmm this new flavor, pretty tasty. Now we got some time to get back to work on this exhaust. So, let me get under here and I'll show you what we're working with. So here, this adorable little piece of pipe here is my factory exhaust. What's well, a two piece? 
that goes into one. So I'm going to cut it right here. And the pipe I have is a little bigger than the pipe that's on here now. But And this is what we have to cut up and, and do whatever to replicate this. By the way, before you come at me about using used exhaust stuff, uh, I don't... I don't think you understand with the exception of this header and the rear leaf springs I put in there last year I've never put brand new stuff on this truck it's it's been very well built on hand-me-down stuff everything I've put on this truck since I bought it was somebody else's leftovers um, well I guess the tires are brand new too but that doesn't count I mean it's got used gears in the axles used transfer case um, used revolver shackles, the, the uh, motor was used, the transmission came out of a rollover truck, everything on this truck was used. So this is not above me at all. Sorry if you don't like it, but sometimes this is what you got to do when you're balling on a budget, you know what I mean? And you know, it's a damn good truck. It's been incredibly reliable since day one on used stuff. So also a quick tip, if you guys wear uh, leather gloves or welding gloves or something and they're stored outside in a shed whatever before you put these on that is uh, <clears throat> just in case there's spiders that have moved themselves into your gloves you don't get bit or stung on the end of your fingers because that hurts like hell that's happened to me more than once kind of just got myself into work mode but uh check it out it's all tacked together now i gotta finish while it out some of my cuts weren't exactly 100 percent so i got me some little gappy gaps but uh i jump a gap like evil can evil you don't even know i'm not scared of a little gappy gap get it all finished welded and then I'll be back when it's time to put it in also if you're gonna be upset that I'm reusing uh, used exhaust you're gonna be real mad when I tell you this this exhaust system when when I went down to the junkyard and I stripped my donor truck for this I pulled all of the exhaust out from underneath it which about three-quarters of it ended up back underneath this truck but this is the rest so this is about to be the third truck this exhaust has gone under. It's all welded out. Now I'm just waiting for it to cool off so I can slide myself up underneath there and put it back in. Now, I know most of you guys don't know this. Some of you do, but most of you don't know this. But uh, I'm actually an ordained minister. And by... Uh, by looking at my first pass on some of those wells, you could tell. Because <laughs> they're pretty holy. Were. <laughs> uh, they were holy. I went back through with a, a wire, brushed them, and then, you know, filled them all back in and stuff. But that's a true story, by the way. I really am a minister. Um, that was about, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, just... For giggles, I've never actually used it, but it's cool to have. Actually thinking about uh, making all my property out here a place of worship so I don't have to pay taxes on it anymore. Because, you know, I live in Utah and churches don't pay taxes in Utah. So, and unintentionally, 
we just unlocked a little bit more horsepower because we went from that dinky ass, what was it, inch and three quarter exhaust to uh, two and a half, or I guess inch and a half ID to two and a quarter ID. So I got that big Weber on there, which means I got more stuff going in. Now I got that big exhaust, so I should have some more stuff going out, which means more power, baby. Hopefully I can do this without knocking you guys off my front drive shaft. They're pretty tight. Well, guys, the time has come. Let's see what she sounds like. This is a 22R with a Weber 3236 um, uh, eBay header, two and a half inch straight pipe to a thrush, three inch muffler. sounds like a almost sounds like a v6 uh i like it it's deceiving but i was hoping to get the radiator fan installed but the parts haven't showed up yet and i've been filming this video for like four cons four different days you know so i think i'm just gonna wrap it up we're gonna call it here thanks for tuning in guys i appreciate you stopping by and spending some time with me and you know i i should have filmed more uh building this exhaust but like i said i just kind of got into work mode and i just used because i use a an old school pipe cutter the one you tighten down and spin around the pipe you know because it makes it gives me a better cut i did an exhaust once using my chop saw and the cuts are my chop saw doesn't cut straight and I don't like using the grinder because my cuts are never straight. <laughs> the pipe cutter makes a pretty decent cut. So, yeah. And like I said, this was all just, well, most of the exhaust was just junkyard stuff. The header was brand new, but, you know, the rest of it was junkyard stuff. You don't need a big budget to make cool stuff and make it sound good and run better. And, yeah. Anyway, sorry for ranting. Uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by, guys. I, I do appreciate it all the time you spend here all the all the watch and the comments and the and the stuff you know I, I appreciate you you're helping me grow and that's what we need to do so remember guys your dreams aren't going to work unless you do so spend a little bit of money on some parts and well that's not necessary come on man you're embarrassing me in front of my friends so remember guys, your dreams aren't going to work unless you do spend a little bit of money on some go fast stuff and tear your truck apart in the driveway. Um, it's the only way you're going to learn, right? Okay, bye!